Hey, this is Jill Simonella with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and this week I am driving a Toyota Highlander in California because I'm here to run a race and I have some friends with me and we have a lot of luggage. So in this review, what I want to talk about is how this does as kind of an active lifestyle vehicle um, for a road trip and to carry a lot of luggage. So let's take a closer look right now. going to do is show you what the trunk looks like. So obviously we have the third row folded flat and um, yeah, that is luggage for four adults and it fit. <laughs> um, you would think that we are moving here forever, but um, nope, we're just here for five days. But um, yeah, we're running a race and we've got <laughs> stuff going on. All right, as you can tell by the wardrobe change, it has now been a couple of days since I introduced this video. We have run a race, we have been driving around the Monterey, California area, we've put luggage in, we've put luggage out, we've had sweaty running gear back here, and we've had three very tired runners in the seats. So for the rest of the video, what I wanna talk about is some of our likes and dislikes, and I'm gonna start back here because while I really appreciated this big space to fit all of our very large luggage, you did catch those red roller boards, right? Um, while I really like that, um, the one problem we found was this right here. And granted, not a huge problem because, hey, by the way, you can take it out. But when we were lifting our luggage in and trying to slide it back, you see what happened there? The mat moves. So that was just a little bit of a problem as we were putting luggage in and out. We didn't like that. So one remedy is just take it out. But I would challenge Toyota to do this and put Velcro on the bottom because, by the way, they've got Velcro pieces on the top to keep it on the back of the seat. So why not put the Velcro on the bottom bit too so that when you're loading stuff in and out, it doesn't move. That would be the first thing that I just wanted to point out that we didn't love about this. However, I'm going to point out again, there is a lot of space back here for stuff. So I'm just gonna scoot all the way back here and you can see my legs are fully extended um, and this is with the third row folded flat, but again, only transporting four adults. So third row folded flat, you have a lot of space back here. So definitely appreciated this aspect of it. Now I'm gonna take you inside because there's one big thing that I really appreciated about this vehicle, especially when it was loaded with all that luggage. All right, now that we are inside the vehicle, I wanna talk about this right here because this happens to be one of those super helpful features that I don't typically like, but found it incredibly useful when the luggage was piled all the way up to the ceiling um, and driving. And, and that is this digital camera mirror. So you look right now and you can see it's reflective. Um, yeah, see, there's my phone, but it's reflective here um, so that you can see out the back window. But if you don't have visibility out the back window, you have a couple of passengers and stuff loaded up, you just go like this and hey, it becomes a digital representation of what is behind you. And that is my tripod, first off. Um, but that is just really helpful. Um, so I, I typically don't like this because the resolution is a little bit fuzzy sometimes. And it, um, I, I don't know, it just messes with my eyes a little bit. But in a pinch and when you have a whole bunch of stuff back there um this is just really really helpful and i loved that feature specifically thinking in terms of adventure lifestyle and filling the back for a road trip
Now, before I bring my friends into the conversation, because I want you to hear what they have to say about what they like about this vehicle, I just want to go over a couple of basic driving impressions from me. And I'm going to start with the driving position. I feel like this is a really decent position uh, for somebody who's on the petite side of things. And, um, you know, the bolstering is pretty decent and I didn't feel like anything was poking me in a weird place. And even though this headrest looks like it pointing forward, like that didn't even bother me. So I feel like I have a good driving position, you know, a solid 12 inches between the base of the steering wheel and my breastbone and um, just generally comfortable for the driving that I was doing for this road trip. Uh, the one thing that I want to point out that I really don't like though, and this will be changing, is the fact that your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are wired in. And um, that to me is just a little bit annoying and cumbersome, especially considering the fact that you have a wireless charging pad right here in your armrest. So you can either charge your phone wirelessly or plug in and use the um, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but you're not going to be able to do both. I, I don't know. I think it's weird. So maybe your passenger uses the wireless charging while you wire in for CarPlay or Auto. I, I don't know. One of my personal pet peeves is wired in things with a wireless charging pad. So this has that. Uh, the other thing I will say, um, at the time of recording this video, haven't figured it out yet, but um, I was using Apple Maps on here and could not figure out how to shut off the sound for Apple Maps. Like the, it would rah, blare, you know, your directions, startle us every single time. And when the thing was talking, I would try and hit your little volume knob and turn it down while it was talking didn't work. I looked on my phone to see if I could turn it down on my phone. That didn't work. I'm sure there's some setting in Apple CarPlay that allows me to, uh, or in Apple Maps that will allow me to turn it off. I haven't found that yet. So maybe, maybe Siri and I will have a, a conversation <laughs> and see if I can figure that out. But so far, haven't figured that out. And that was also a little bit annoying. Outside of that, I'm going to point out that, again, there are four passengers in here and you can customize your climate based on your seating position. So sitting in the driver's seat, you can have your heated seats on with turning your heat up. Passenger seat, you can put on your cooled seat and turn your HVAC down. Then you have rear HVAC climate controls as well as heated seats in both of the outboard seating positions. And um, I mean, we'll have to ask my friends what they thought about it, but I have to imagine that is definitely a huge plus point, especially uh, because we're all at different um, you know, climate levels in terms of what we prefer. So um, I have to think that was also a huge win because basically that's something that I would like because I'm always cold. So, all right, so you've heard enough from me. You probably don't need to hear anymore. Let's flip the camera back this way and talk to my friends and see what they thought about the overall comfort and things that they liked and didn't like on this vehicle. passengers with me. So um, we have Di, <laughs> Tanya, and my husband, this guy over here. So um, basically what I want to do is I'm going to turn this over to them and I would really like for them to just talk about some of the things they like and they don't like on this vehicle. So have at it. Don't everybody speak at once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tanya, I'm going to go to you. You're the most vocal of the group. What do you like? Not All like? Alrighty. So I love the heated seats in the back. Um, and I love, there, there's two uh, USB-C ports back here for charging your phone or whatever, and a 120 volt um, plug if you wanted to charge a computer or something like that. So I think that's all great. It's comfortable, there's a lot of leg room. Um, I don't like the mat in the back, in the, in the bed. It slides around and it would be really annoying. So I hope they can do something about that. Right, okay, so tell everybody how tall you are because I always say there's a lot of leg room and I'm five feet tall and they're like, yeah, we don't believe you. I am 5'7". Okay, so 5'7", kind of an average size adult back there. Uh, Jonathan, you go. Hi. So, the I, I've had it on the cooling seat ever since I've gotten into the car. 
it's good, not great, could be stronger. Um, you also drove, so um, what did you think of how it handled? Um, driving handles pretty good. I still feel like a U-boat commander <laughs> when driving this thing. It's a lot bigger than what I am used to. The, uh, the you know, hit the gas pedal isn't isn't all that bad. I can't complain about that. It is extremely responsive. Same with the steering. Um, there doesn't seem to be too much play in the wheel. As far as the on the road. Yeah. As far, <laughs> Sorry, I was like trying to look at how many miles we've gone, but go ahead. As far as um, the setup though on the, um, what, what are we calling this thing? Infotainment system. Infotainment system. I would prefer if we could have the map on one side and radio slash music control on the other so that we would have an easier time. You can do that. Picking and or changing channels, then maybe you just don't want it there. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't like his music, in case you've missed that. Nor do uh, I like hers. So that, that would be also a fair assessment. Um, yeah, so we just kind of, it, it is possible, but I just blocked that out. Um, all right, so anything else that you feel strongly about that you like or you don't like? No, otherwise, I, I, I love the idea that we've been driving this thing for five days now and we're only through half a tank of gas, which is really nice. Yeah, hybrid. So definitely a huge bonus. All right, Di, you are up. What do you like? So I actually, first, first of all, I would say I think it's a very nice looking car. I like the design of it. And um, I also think that I agree with Tanya, it's very roomy. We've been back here in the back seat, tons of leg room, it's very comfortable for the most part, um, which brings me to the thing I would, I would maybe offer up as an opportunity is um, sometimes when we go over some bumps, I feel like it's a little bit rough. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there's something to look at there, but otherwise overall, I think it's been a, a great, opportunity and experience for us. Awesome. So I will point out, I have not been um, catching air while I've been driving today. We've been <laughs> on roads. So um, she- At the next light, turn right. She's definitely talking about the surface streets and um, just some of the, the potholes and bumps that we've been hitting. So um, yeah, all right. I, I'm just gonna echo everything that they said. Um, and I've been really hard on the Highlander in the past, but um, taking it into this specific situation where you have some adults and their stuff that you need to put in here for a road trip, I think this gets a complete thumbs up for me and my husband hit it on the head. We have been driving for five days from San Jose to Monterey and all around Monterey and Carmel and back and forth um, at least 40 miles every day. and. We're still at only half a tank. And when we're looking at gas, that's six miles per gallon down in California. Six, six, six dollars, dollars per gallon. gallon. Six, what did I say? Miles. Oh, six dollars per gallon, huge thumbs up. <laughs> so as you can tell, we're running a little bit on E um, with a marathon and a 21 miler and 11 miler under the belt. But overall, the Highlander is pretty comfortable. And I think in this situation, we're all giving it mostly a thumbs up. Definitely some things to work on, but. <laughs> Thumbs up. I was definitely impressed on how easily all of our gear fit in back yeah. in the third row. Yeah. So, all right, that's it. That's all I've got for this look at the Highlander Hybrid. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check us out on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com, and I will see you down the road.